Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Our first lesson is from Numbers. Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, 
And he gathered seventy elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the seventy elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied. But they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad, and the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. And Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 104, verses 25 through 35 and 37. O Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea, with its living things too many to number, creatures both small and great. There move the ships, and there is that Leviathan, which you have made for the sport of it. All of them look to you, to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You hide your face, and they are terrified. You take away their breath, and they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created, and so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth, and it trembles. He touches the mountains, and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second reading is from the first letter to the Corinthians. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we are all made to drink of one Spirit. The Word of the Lord. Thanks. This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. 
After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. It's good to be with you this morning. I wanted to start off by talking a little bit about me. Uh, and during this whole pandemic, a lot has happened to all of us. Uh, some of the highlights for our family is uh, one Sunday morning, we celebrated gathering together, watching the video by eating homemade donut holes. It was a nice way of remembering our fellowship together on Sunday mornings. I've also made uh, meringue cookies, cakes, and brownies. I am proud that I have finally mastered an easily peelable hard-boiled egg. It all came down to steaming it rather than boiling it. Also, I have made hummus that is actually enjoyed by my children. Like most of you, I now wear a lot of hats, a lot of different professions in addition to just this collar. I am also a Lego construction specialist a part-time teacher, and a children's therapist. I think I have watched all the television I'm interested in watching. I have easily become a short order cook, a personal shopper, and a housekeeper. I have to admit to each and every one of you that I still spray every piece of mail with disinfectant. Whenever I go to HEB or Walmart, I bring back every item and it's wiped down with disinfectant. I take my vitamins every single day and I wear a mask everywhere I go. Like so many of us, I began this pandemic in a state of fear and uncertainty. And today, the day of Pentecost, as we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit, I am now near a point of tranquility and uncertainty. More than any year before, I think I appreciate and understand the gift of the Holy Spirit better than ever before. The gift of the Holy Spirit is a reminder that we are not in control. We don't have to be in control. The gift of the Holy Spirit is God's call to us to live each moment with the help of the Holy Spirit, rather than being distracted by the uncertainty of the future as we try going it alone. I want you to think a little bit about the lives of the early Christians. Many were being ostracized from families because of their conversion to Christianity. There was probably angst and anger and doubt about what they were doing. During this period of death, resurrection, and ascension, Jesus' followers were probably lured by false prophets, government authorities, and religious leaders who promised their personal safety versus persecution. And all that they did, they were outsiders, the minority of humankind. Often they were portrayed by fellow followers. Ultimately, they had to trust, trust in God, trust in Jesus Christ, and trust that when Christ said that he sent the Holy Spirit to be with them, he was actually there. The Holy Spirit was actually with them, just as the Holy Spirit is now with us. With this trust, or maybe more appropriately with this faith, they received an incredible gift, the gift of the Holy Spirit. It is the gift of the Holy Spirit that inspires. It is the gift of the Holy Spirit that gives us hope. It is the gift of the Holy Spirit that gives us courage. 
The gift of the Holy Spirit does not enable us to be reckless. It does not enable us to taunt or to test God. It's not a gift of a way in which to acquire material wealth. The gift of the Holy Spirit is a gift of love. During this pandemic, it is the promise that God is very much with us. If we are healthy, God is with us to inspire us to help others. If we are sick, God is by our side to guide us in our recovery. And if we're overcome by the disease, God is there to cry with those who love us and to provide us with eternal life. I encourage you to tap into the gift of the Holy Spirit that has always been with us during the normal and the not so normal. Let the Holy Spirit refresh you. Let the Holy Spirit inspire you. Let yourself be consumed by the tranquility of the Holy Spirit. Matthew tells us that Jesus said, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble on its own. Jesus tells us every day, come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. And God said through Isaiah, do not fear for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. God is with us. Jesus Christ is with us. And the Holy Spirit continues to guide us. So here is your homework assignment. Now, this is a spiritual assignment. Most of y'all are very familiar with a trust exercise where, you know, you fall backwards and the person behind you is supposed to catch you. Whenever you try this, there is often some anxiety and fear that the person is not going to catch you. As we confront the fears and anxiety of our own worlds, imagine this trust exercise as a spiritual exercise. Imagine falling backwards. And as you're falling, imagine everything that's possible, all your fears and trepidation going through your head. And then imagine the Holy Spirit catching you. Just as Christians throughout time have faced the perils of this world, the Holy Spirit with Christ Jesus and God are always there to catch us. Let us give thanks for the gift of the Holy Spirit today, tomorrow, and always, and let it inspire you to live fully and boldly in Christ. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Let us say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Our service continues with the prayers. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Prayers of the People Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially for Michael, our presiding bishop, David, our bishop, our priests, and the people of St. Barnabas who are very real ministers of your word, and for all who minister in Christ's name throughout the world, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, especially for Donald, our president, Greg, our governor, and all our elected and appointed leaders, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest, especially those who have died because of this virus and all those people who we love but see no longer. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others, and I invite you to offer up those prayers either aloud or silently. We pray also for all for whom no one prays, for our family and friends in the military. We pray for those celebrating birthdays, for Barrett, Catherine, Chris, Leslie, and Nicholas. For those celebrating anniversaries, Mary Ann and Bill, Larry and Susan, Russ and Heather, John and Roy Lynn, Dan and Nancy. The Collect of the Day. Almighty God, on this day you open the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel, that it may reach the ends of the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, 
through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.